I like to be silly. I like to be fun. Like this is me enjoying myself. This is the inner me that was lost for such a long time coming back out. Hi babes, Lady Silverstone here and welcome to my podcast where we're trying to demystify cannabis one conversation at a time. In this episode we're talking about the relationships people have with cannabis, the taboo around it and the censorship on social media with our guest today. She's a cool micro-influencer on Instagram and has a direct experience with cannabis users in California as a professional bud tender. Please welcome Jackie. I hope you enjoy it. Hey, how are you, babe? Good, your hair looks amazing. You cut it. I cut it and like my roots are out. Usually I'm blo- No, not usually. My original color is brown or light brown. Uh-huh. And now it's been, yeah, just more than one and a half years since I did anything with my hair. So, uh, yeah, it feels good. But I, I love it. It you looks know, so good. Yeah, but you know when you're like, oh, shit, I want to just do something to make it more, more <laughs> springy. Example right here. <laughs> <laughs> I love your hair, though. I love that you're so, I mean, that you dare to, like, test stuff. I don't because yeah. my hair is so thin. I'm scared, like, if I if I do anything that, like, I won't have any hair after, you know? <laughs> oh, no, I've lost a lot of hair, but I don't know. I've been... <laughs> I've been I've been a little bold lately. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, that's fine. Otherwise, are you good? I am. I am. Um, just working a lot. The industry has been super busy right now during this time, so I feel like every day is like work, 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 work. <laughs> yeah. So how has it been different from before? I mean, I understand like with safety measures, probably, right? Yeah. So we we have like a whole wall kind of built in between um, us and the patients now so it was a little difficult at first because a lot of our patients did come in for that like one-in-one communication that bond and all of a sudden they were like you can't get near us you can't touch this you can't smell it you can't look at it yes of course yeah there there was there was a lot of frustration and you know we just had to be calm because at the end of the day it's like there's still patients coming in for a specific reason, so we can't like... And say for them, I mean, they rather have those restrictions than not being able to buy. I mean, here in Spain, we have uh, cannabis social clubs where we buy our cannabis, and that has been closed now for, yeah, eight weeks. Uh, so, yeah, that makes it really hard for people to to get their medicine, you know, not only medicine that they get from from doctors because i'm sure that they can still get it but people that let's say self-medicate with with the cannabis from the social clubs completely completely closed unfortunately yeah i can't imagine and we have remained open from the very start of quarantine like there was never a day where it was like completely shut down um it just got busier honestly (laughs) the lines just became longer and longer people would wait two three hours just just for their medicine and then just stock up they were stocking up like if it was the end of the world and i'm like we're not closing guys but they were you know it was just such uncertainty we we really couldn't say that we were not closing because we didn't know what was getting shut down and what was going to you know remain open but fortunately i feel like my life has remained so so normal because of my job i haven't felt like stuck at home i haven't felt like what you know most of the world has felt um and I've been, you know, helping people through it. So it just, I don't know, it just makes me feel really good. <laughs> yeah. When did you start working as, because you're like, your title is what? Bud tender. Correct. When did you start there? And is this your first cannabis related job? Um, so it's not my first. I actually started last year around July, like last summer. Uh, I was in between jobs. I was actually an Uber driver for quite a bit. Okay. Um, so that helped me socialize a little bit more because I was always very shy, very timid. I, I won't start a conversation. Uh, I won't say hello first. I'm just a very awkward person. Or I was, I, I should say, because now I'm like, hey, everyone. That is so phone. brave <laughs> throwing yourself into an Uber then where you know that every, like through all the day you're going to meet, I don't know, 100 people maybe sometimes. Yeah, from like all over the world. You know, I'd pick yes. up people from the airport and, then, you know, um, so then one day I was Ubering this girl and I dropped her off at a dispensary and I was like, Hey, like, 
is are you picking up or do you work here and she's like oh no I like I work here and she actually got me the job that day like no complete stranger yeah I came down and um, I met with the manager and I was like yeah I mean like this is what I've done in the past um, you know I have pretty much done it all I feel like so I had you know a good background in you know office work and just being around people um, and then they're like, okay, well, do you know, like, do you consume? And I was like, no, but I'm sure I can. <laughs> I was just so like positive into like going into something so new and drastic. Um, and sure enough, I mean, they were all, everybody was really nice. They, they taught me pretty much from zero to nothing. And at my first shop, I still wasn't really consuming. It, it was just, you know, serving people um, what we had. Now at this job, I feel like I've, I've learned so much more. It is completely different than any of the other ones. Like every shop is going to be different, honestly. But um, we just have so much merchandise. We have so much product um, that is just so helpful. And, you know, I suffered from like anxiety and depression. And slowly through this journey, I've realized that, you know, it's not always going to be like, tough like that like there's there's things out there that are so natural that can help you um and you have this like huge support system with this little can of community like look at us we're we I chatting know. on a I on know. a sunday morning <laughs> across the, sunday evening the for me. <laughs> so wonderful i know it's just it's just turned my life around honestly and it's brought so much positivity so it, it holds a dear place in my heart now <laughs> yeah and i think as we are so let's say stigmatized and and we are this just little chunk of people, you know, but we're so many still if we, if we, you know, put us together, but we're really spread out. And this community is just so amazing, so kind, so supportive and helpful, you know, whether we are sitting in, you know, somewhere in California or in Sweden or in Spain or in India or somewhere in Asia, it's really amazing to see how we, as if there's no borders, as if you're not very far from me, you know? That's how it feels. Yeah, like, <laughs> passing drinks to each other. Exactly. <laughs> so nice. And then also like learning how how it is in like other countries. That's that's so interesting to me now because I I've I've been so closed minded growing up about you know cannabis and and the laws around it and coming into it like I I, I still feel like I'm learning so much like I, I I'm not certain about um you know it's 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 something that's legal now, but is it going to be legal in a couple of years? Is this job of mine going to be something that I'm going to keep being able to do for the rest of my life? Or is this all just kind of like temporary and that? Oh, do you feel that way sometimes? That is scary. I haven't even thought about that. I know. See, this is where my brain takes me. I'm like preparing for the future. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to be optimistic, but I'm like, I really hope that it won't go backwards again. Can Do you think it could do that? I don't know. Everything that's happening right now, it just... It's made things, yeah, it's made things so, I, you know, I never thought that Disneyland would ever close or, you know, all these like restaurants would be completely closed and freeways would be empty. But, but it's a good sign though to see that they kept um, the dispensaries open during quarantine because that at least will give you some kind of like, even though in this kind of scenario that it's not a war scenario, but it's kind of like just below that because i mean having having close i mean closing whole cities and countries mm -hmm. for a virus i mean that's that's kind of war um war feeling you know and uh, that that is scary but at least knowing that the dispensaries are open for that that's really good news though considered essential how is it though like in because i know that the u.s generally working at a what, wherever you work, even if you work at H and M or in an office or whatever, like the the working condition can be very harsh, right? Like yes, it's hard sometimes to uh, to have like insurance, uh, insurances in general. How is that affecting like the dis all the dispensaries and stuff? Um. Well, we, I mean, as an as an employee, it's completely the same as working everyone else, like everywhere else. Is that what you mean? Like my like getting medical coverage yeah and yeah yeah yeah. like is that is that part of like the whole dispense cannabis industry is that something that they take into big um 
consideration as cannabis is trying to really focus on health as well. Yeah, unfortunately, mm -mm, they haven't like moved that far into it. You most places still like drug tests. So you still can't get a job if you have cannabis in your system. Um, so a lot of people that come in to medicate will like look for other options like, you know, pure CBD, but they're still like, oh, it's still not helping that itch that I need, but I can't take THC because then I'll get fired from my job. I feel like then there's our jobs like we, you know, we don't get tested like that. So it's, I feel like it's, it's still all very different and very new. Um, we also like don't, but like for like elderly patients mm -hmm. too, there isn't like a, like a system for them okay. to like medicate with marijuana yet. I don't think at least not in my understanding of it. Mm, okay. Like for them to um, kind of like get assist assistant help for it yeah i would yeah, say yeah. like if since they're you know only getting social security and have coverage for their like medicines that are get prescribed by doctors um then on their own they have to pay for like choosing okay to yeah choose cannabis as a solution and that can get very expensive i know it is kind of expensive because people come in and like you know drop hundreds weekly and i'm just like oh my god this is so sad that it's it's getting taxed so much okay so how is that how is that going so for example if i come into the dispensary like what is the lowest okay i don't know if you talk in grams but if i want to buy one gram do. okay so if i want to buy one gram like what is the lowest price so um at my dispensary specifically it, since it's all pre-packaged we buy we sell by the gram by the eighth sometimes by the quarter and then like it just jumps to a half ounce and a full ounce. Um, so if you wanted to buy a gram of like, not our, like the lowest quality, but like the lowest price, it'd be $6 for a gram. And then it can go up to like $25 for a gram. Okay. And yeah. then most people will just like then and swipe that and just go for the eight since it's the three and a half gram package. And those we have been starting at like $20. So it just like, there's it's all the prices but people you know it would it'll be like the same strain if you choose that tier if that makes sense yeah yeah So yeah. like you'll come weekly and it's it's pretty much you're going to be smoking the same thing okay um if you keep buying from that section it will get like new stuff here here and there but it it goes back to much pretty pretty much be basic so it kind of forces you to like want to jump a tier or pay a little extra to try a different strain or mm. get the strain that's going to most benefit, you know, what you need it for. Yeah. Because not all strains are going to be the same. The most expensive is like right now at our shop is like $75 for just three and a half grams. Wow. <laughs> oh, <yeah>. oh God. <laughs> it's crazy. That's huge. I mean, yeah. is it good? Have you tried it? I have. I have. I did try one um and it, i mean the quality the quality of some of like the 30 40 dollar ones w was pretty much the same i feel like it's mm. it's a lot of the the brand um the freshness of the the quality it was definitely beautiful looking buds like i took pictures for days and i was so mesmerized by it so i think it's just like you know it's it's going to starbucks versus versus making coffee at home type of mindset or getting that little bougie extra treat <laughs> um even like the the cartridges like i was going to say the like the vape pens are so expensive now too like the most expensive one is like 75 dollars as well 80 and then you refill or is that just one ah, okay for a gram for one gram correct for one gram mm -hmm. or some companies won't even like send grams they'll just like do half grams and then make that like the the big price so it's there's unfortunately there's lots of options for everyone. So if someone can't like get that big price, I'm like, I'm your guinea pig. I've tried it all. Here nice. <laughs> so lucky though. Yeah. Is there sometimes it, it that is you a have very tried? fortunate job? It really is. And I think a lot of people here in, in Europe really looks forward to to be able to get a job like that, you know? As soon as it's out there, we're we're roommates. I'm oh, yeah. <laughs> so much fun. And also, I think it's going to, I don't know, I think it's going to be a little bit different maybe from the US. 
in terms of maybe I don't know because you have a lot of you have a lot of options when you get into dispensary of course I can imagine you have not only I mean you have so many options both in in potency but also in um CBD strains and THC strands and uh, strains and then uh, uh, one to one strains and and so on like there must be so many here I hope it's going to be the same because now when we go to the the cannabis social club that we have here in Spain at least the ones that I go to we have about I don't know between 6 and 10 options that's it and it's only THC that is around like yeah 18 to 20 percent so it's only that only that which is very it's so sad because I want something that is more like one to one ratio because for Mm -hmm. me that is for me that's much better Uh, and then I have I just have to buy uh, CBD flowers on the side and then grind it and mix it together which I I love as well but it's just I would love to be able for people to to be able to buy one to one ratio of flowers, you know, and not have this really strong every time they smoke, you know. You're like, I'm not trying to get super high every time. I'm just trying to, you know, relax and <laughs> exactly. be calm. <laughs> exactly. Do do they have like um like THC tinctures, like the the droplets? The droplets? No, I mean sometimes you can find it if you ask, but then it's not gonna be. Uh, it's going to be someone that made it themselves. And uh, do you see what I mean? Like, I mean, and these mm-hmm. places do not look like the dispensaries that you have over there. I'm telling you, <laughs> this is like a little <laughs> dungeon kind of feel, you know, you get in and it's a bit like, it looks a bit shady often. It looks really something like an underground kind of, you know, you cannot see it from mm-hmm. the outside. You go in through like two doors and then you come into this thing without <laughs> like what's the passcode? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you have to show your little <laughs> member card chip and stuff before you even get into the place, you know? Well, I feel like that's how it kind of started here too. I mean, it was uh the ones that I remember like hearing about or seeing back in the I'm gonna say back in the days, like when I was younger, it they were, there was no advertisement. All the windows were tinted. It was super dark. You'd page in, you'd go in. And that's, that was my idea of dispensaries. When I started the job, I was like, oh my God, this is going to be scary. Like all these people are going to be so intimidating. They're probably (laughs) going to like be so serious. And, and then I walk into this like pharmacy looking place, bright advertisements. There was a drive-through in the first one that I like started at, um, and it was nothing from what I expected. Even like, I mean, I was a little stereotypical too with like the type of patients I thought I was going to be seeing. I thought they were going to be scary. Like, you know, it's just yeah. this whole idea that I grew up with, with cannabis and how I'm not going to say like my family saw it, but you know, they, they raised you a certain way and yeah. drugs are bad and marijuana is a drug and marijuana is bad. And and then you see this other side of it and you're like, no, it's not. Like it's helping so many people. It's it's yeah. helping people wake up in the morning. It's helping people through pain, through hard times and everything from depression to to back pain. And yeah, just feeling having a better mood and be able to go through the day, essentially. You you can get through anything, I feel like. Sorry for interrupting. I hope you enjoy listening so far. Please check out my account Lady Silverstone at patreon.com so I can continue creating cannabis content for you. What did your parents say then when you told them like, oh yeah, I have a new job. Uh, it's in a cannabis store. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we've ever, we ever really had that talk. It was kind of just like my mom... Um, lives in Mexico most of the most of the time and during this quarantine she has stayed in America a lot longer I kind of have had to explain a little bit more about my job I always just said oh yeah I'm going to work or like these offices down the street or up the street and then she started to kind of like smell my clothes and like Mm-hmm. get a little suspicious and I was like okay it's it's this like packing like I, I never actually told her what it is I don't think she even would understand what it is honestly unless I like take her inside and that terrifies me <laughs> okay so you so she doesn't know what you're doing 
Really? Mm -mm. Oh, <laughs> Not wow. really. But so now she's staying with you or? Yeah. So I, I, she, I'm living with her now and all my consumption and medic, you know, medicating has to be done like outside of the house. Mm -mm. I'm just, I'm still, I'm still scared to have that conversation with her. So I just, I, I know it's something that she's not going to like and not going to agree with or or not see both sides at first out of frustration. Yeah. So I'm just going to, you know, slowly <laughs> trail it in. But she knows that I that I work for the cannabis industry. She just doesn't know to what extent. She doesn't know that I'm like, you know, the front face. <laughs> no, okay. Of it. She thinks mm -hmm. that you're sitting behind a computer somewhere. Correct. And what like... So did you then grow up? So she's living in Mexico most of the time, you said. Correct. So she has a house here um, in Southern California and back in Mexico. She does um, business in both. And most of the time she's out there with her family and she'll come, you know, check in on us, visit, make sure her kids are doing okay. And then she'll go back and just back and forth. Um, so now that I have her here, um, I have to like medicate in my car and like <laughs> it's such do a you struggle. do a lot of like edibles now when you cannot like i do that's yeah. why i you know i've been posting so much about edibles and i've been like making like coffees in the morning and little pastries and just like sneaking it in here and there and then i'll be like <laughs> oh like mom you want to try this and then she's like oh yeah that was really good she's and then she'll just be like oh i'm sleepy like i'm i'm just gonna go to bed now or she'll like i'll find her like snacking like a little later i, I never put like <laughs> anything over like five milligrams so it's it's a very micro 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 dose that she'll you know it's she so funny though that she she just <laughs> feels that you know she's good and feels you know mm, you know she's probably exactly. loving it and she's like in such a good mood and then we have like the greatest conversations um and I just feel so comfortable talking to her you know at that point so it's like just here and there yeah 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 whenever we we're together Oh, so a nice. Little, a little droplet of my coffee. Yes. But yeah, yeah it's, it's, I mean, it's crazy that she doesn't know what has been, you know, kind of turning my life around and making me so much more positive and so much of a better person. And that I'm in my happiest state of mind right now. Is she, so is she a bit like traditional? Is her, her part of the family very traditional in the sense of like how you should behave, what you should do in life and, and so on? She is. She she is. so it was very standard um she was a housewife from the minute that she got married she got married very young i think maybe like 17 oh wow um, and then to they like, came to america correct mm -hmm. and then they came to america um he brought him and my sister and my brother um they were the two that were born still in mexico and then my other sister and myself were born here okay. so it was just I'm still kind of like in that first generation here. Like I was the first born here in America. So it's, it's, it's a, a very different lifestyle to, to a custom. And I feel like I have to be a certain way when I'm around her. And then when I'm with my friends or at work, I'm like a completely different person. It, it's just all about respect. It's not so much that I like can't be myself with her. It's just, no, I course. know what she likes and I know what she doesn't like. And it's like, you know, I'm I'm so easygoing that it's like it's not even an issue. <laughs> but that's the whole thing, you know, with parents that you're. It's as if you feel that like, oh, they shouldn't have. Like, I know this is just gonna bring them so much like worry and and I don't know, not like negative thoughts necessarily, but like yeah, this worry if I tell them about exactly what I'm doing, for example. Do you see what I mean? Like, that's maybe what you're feeling, that, like, you don't want to, like, give that extra little, like, burden, kind of, because you know that she will see it as a burden. I just don't want, like, I feel like if she were to know, if I were to do anything silly or just, like, goofy or or mess up with anything, you know, like, make a mistake, it's, like, in her head, it's going to be, like, because of that. Yeah, 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 <laughs> exactly, yes. That is so, that is also so sad that... Uh, that that's going to be the first thing that they think of. Do you see what I mean? For mm -hmm. example, my little mm -hmm. sister, she it's was... Yeah, yeah, yeah. My little sister was... She was using weed a lot. Like, she started... She's four years younger than me, but started way earlier than me. Um, but she also has an addiction problem. So whatever it was, whether it's like cannabis or alcohol or like C-vitamin pills, she would just like 
you know, overloaded um, hardcore. So, and she, for that, she could she was very like uh, depressed for a while and couldn't really, you know, do her studies and couldn't really like keep a, keep a job and so on. So for my parents, they were like, look what the cannabis is doing to you, you know? And she was all, they were always calling me, complaining about that. And I got so fed up. And at that moment, I didn't tell them either that I was using cannabis because I was scared, you know? I'm like, shit, I don't want to put it on them, you know? But then I got so fed up because they, they didn't stop complaining about the cannabis. And for me, I'm like, both me and my husband, we are very, you know, productive and creative and we... Uh, we love doing a lot of product projects and a lot of things, you know, and meeting people and, and so on. And for my mom, she thought that you cannot do that and be a cannabis smoker. Like that doesn't go together. You cannot have a normal life and be a cannabis smoker. Basically, if you smoke cannabis, you will become like my sister. And I told her, I'm like, like addiction is a whole thing by itself. And adding like mental health issues on that as well it doesn't matter if it's cannabis or sugar or like sex that is gonna be your you know your thing it's gonna then take you down and I think now when my sister has been like sober and really worked on herself for yeah almost one and a half year they realize that like ah, okay so it's so much more than this like thing where we always blame uh yeah a substance and it's in this thing, in this, yeah, story, cannabis, you know? And I, I feel like it goes, like, side to side with alcohol. Like, it's, like, either alcohol or, or you're either drunk on alcohol or high on cannabis. It's, like, there, there's never, like, in-betweens either. Because I feel like every time we go out in the street and she sees, you know, someone doing something crazy, oh, he's, you know under the under the influence of marijuana like that's what's making him do all these crazy things and like you said like people with you know with addiction problems my uh my father actually passed away um he was an alcoholic so i think that's another reason why it's it's such a big deal to her because she she sees that as like if i were to start doing something like that like i'd go down the same path and the same ending to to what he had um, but it was just like you said, it was just an addiction problem. It, it could have been anything, but he he chose alcohol. Um, I wish he would have chosen cannabis. That would have been cool, you know. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And it's so it's so it sad because that is it's so stigmatized to talk, and especially when it comes to alcohol, like people that has alcohol as their addiction, it's very hard to be taken seriously because it's so so much it's such a part of people's lives you know you celebrate with alcohol you whether it's birthdays or christmas or or just summer holiday or weekend you sell do you, do you see what i mean like you come over to friends you bring beer you have friends over you have some wine like it that it's so it's such a norm <laughs> yes exactly so for, i think for people that has a problem with alcohol it's so much harder to to like realize it for themselves and admit it for themselves and then admit it to other people and seek help. I mean, I think there's so many steps in between. Of course, for any addiction, I'm not saying um, that it's easier with other addictions. Of course not. But not other drugs are like so publicized, you know, like they're not going to like go to the store and see, you know, crack or, you know, something lying around. It's just like, you're going to go to the store and you're going to see alcohol. You're going to go to the pharmacy and you're going to see alcohol. You're going to go to a restaurant and there's going to be a bar. Like it's just yes. everywhere. Mm. And you see movies, for example, you know, very classy stuff. You know, they sit with champagne and stuff. When there's like, a, when they want to show something dark and very unhealthy and scary in a movie, then, then you see, you know, this, this person sitting with like a crack pipe or a joint in the sofa, you know? <laughs> yes exactly so true it's so sad <laughs> what a world oh la la yeah yeah but i really wonder i'm like who what do you think a, a, a weed smoker is like what is the the image that people have in their head when they when they think about it you know like what do you think? think that's why i've enjoyed my instagram so much because it's like you know what i'm gonna give you my version of what it is to be a weed smoker or 
a weed consumer. I don't what's the the proper way to make it sound? <laughs> you know what yeah, it is. Weed it's, user. It's not a weed user. The the word for it that I get I feel like gets so much negative is like you're such a pothead. Like this is why you are the way you are. And I'm like, no, it's just uh, I like to be silly. I like to be fun. Like this is me enjoying myself this is the inner me that was lost for such a long time coming back out seeing the light and it's just such a fun experience i have a lot of footage from when i'm young so my dad was filming from uh, the birth of both me and my little sister with a video camera and Um. like every day he was filming so i have i have so much i have hours and hours and hours of video from when i grew up and looking at myself when i'm young like before before eight let's say you know when you're really a child and it's so it's so different seeing those first year before you become a teenager and all these like very dark thoughts are coming into your life you know when you start thinking about you get very self-conscious and and people are like mean in school you're starting to realize like that if you are a certain way you you might be like outside of your circle of friends. Do you see what I mean? Like if you choose to go this path, even though you might want to, you might not have these friends anymore. Or do you see what I mean? Like this whole thing. If you, yeah, if you want to be silly, well, don't hang with us. Do you see what I mean? This this whole thing. And Correct. you just... Yeah, and then at that age, you just <sighs> don't care. You're just like wearing mismatch clothes, yes. all the bright colors, and you're just like dancing around. I, yeah. I too, I think we were... We, we were still in that era where everything was filmed. All my yeah. birthdays were filmed. Everything that like putting the Christmas lights on was filmed. So mm. that, that, that's what I mean. Like I was, I was seeing all these videos and I was like, what happened to me? Like Oof, I am yeah. such a like, <laughs> like, what do you call it? Like a routine person. I was just, you know, living my nine to five and just like, mm. you know, going to the gym. Just, it was just such a basic life. Yeah. I wasn't making any friends. Like I was so antisocial. Mm-hmm. And then now I'm just like, hey, who wants to hang out? Like, yes. and then quarantine happened. I'm like, ah. <laughs> you're like, this is not the time. <laughs> this is not what I had planned. <laughs> so you have th- two sisters and one brother. I do. Uh, they're they're it's it's a really large age gap too. So my the closest one to me is maybe seventeen years apart. So. My my siblings my siblings could be my parents, so most of them most of them don't know about my little journey <laughs> journey here either. <laughs> so do they feel a bit like your mom? I feel like some of them I'm not really that close to, so it's it, it wasn't like such a drastic jump. But they um, all have children, and I'm really close with their children, so that part was a little scary. And um, they're all I think all going to be over the age of eighteen this year, so. We're all going to have that like little talk of, you know, because obviously my Instagram is like public. I'm not trying to hide anything. So they kind of get get the idea. Do they have you on Instagram already? I feel like most of them do. <laughs> so they, they, they see their, their, their aunt on there. Um, but even when they like hang out with me, I feel like they're enjoying me way more now because they see that I like. I'm not just like, oh, hey, guys, like, and then I go to my room. I'm just like, hey, guys, you guys want, like, want to do a puzzle? Do you guys want to bake something? <laughs> I'm just like, with all this energy. And so they, they are already in that group of generation where they're not seeing it as such a, like, dark, negative thing. They, they understand that it's, like, medicine and that it can be used to help people. So I'm not trying to, like, reach the people that are already so stuck on their mindset. I'm trying to, like, reach you know, our generation and forward, I feel like. Yeah. Because we still have that, like, opportunity to change, you know, the future. Not, obviously not what has happened in in the past, but yeah, I feel like we can, we can make a little change or a little shift in this. Definitely. I think we can make a huge, huge change. I mean, especially when it comes to, like you say, how how you perceive or how people imagine a weed smoker or a weed user, like we said. I mean, everyone is so different. I, I don't, I think it's so unnecessary that we have this, like, it's like a fixed stereotype. It's like you're dumb, you make bad jokes and you sit on the couch. Like, 
what no i don't even know those people like i haven't i don't know one person that is like that you know and i know a lot of people that uses weed so it's so uh, dumb to have that you know and uh, i think that showing people like you and i and so many other especially like women that i both that i have been into interviewing before and that we both are in contact with on Instagram. I mean, it's so inspiring to see that there's so many like female owned both uh, companies and brands and so on in in the cannabis field and that are like super powerful activists. It's so inspiring to see. And I think they like, that's the face of cannabis. Like female is the face of cannabis for real, mm-hmm. you know? It is. Yeah. It really is. And uh, oh, mm, I love it. <laughs> it gets you so excited just talking about it, right? I, that's how I feel too. Like my heart just like, oh, this is such, it's such a blessing. It is. It really is. And I hope that like, you know, in the near future, I can imagine, you know, like, okay, let's say in five years, I hope it's going to be, you know, much more legal here in Europe. And I want to, I just want to create this, you know, like, I don't know, like a nice retreat or which is all like rent a big villa here in Spain, you know, with like places oh for like 25 God. people. Can you imagine how nice it would be? Oh, all and just me. finally meet. <laughs> <laughs> so that nice. That would be so cool. Yes. Oh. And I, I feel like each, every one of us would completely drop everything and be like, yes, let's plan this. We're, we're doing this. <laughs> yes. Yes. Now I'm like, oh, shit. Too good that is doesn't happening now in the corona times because i've seen a lot of a lot of events was just like yeah cancelled um unfortunately because we have a big one here in spain called spanabis um mm-hmm. that is like this huge cannabis fair uh, that is every march and this year it was obviously cancelled and it's too bad because like this industry really needs, you know, to be consistent and really show that we are here, you know. So like when a uh, when the world is on pause, like we are also on pause, but as we are all on Instagram and we're doing videos and we're doing talks and we're doing we're writing and so on, we're still very present, uh, obviously, which is awesome. Yeah, that's what that I feel like that's what's helping us so much though. Imagine if we did like we're literally just stuck at home, not being able to talk to anybody, not having devices like this and just going crazy as it is. We're becoming we're becoming very, very creative during this time, I, I would say, because the Instagram is filled with so many like interesting things right now. It is. It really is. And so many people are getting so creative in like their own content, you know. They're making small, uh, I don't know, like how-to videos or having small like live chats with people, you know. You know, you were also on Tess. um... Yes, that was like my first type of interview like that ever. And it was was a little scary, but I I, I tried to keep my cool. I was like, all right. You did, you did. Answer the question. (laughs) (laughs) And also when it's live, it's so scary. I'm like exactly <laughs> well fortunately wait was it live it was live it was I live it was like pre-recorded it was live yeah it was live you're right that is scary she posted it then later yeah but it was live at the time <laughs> i know that's why i was so grateful that you were like this is this is going to be recorded and i'm like oh, okay i have more time to to prepare exactly and you can take pauses or i mean whatever Dear listeners, if you like what you hear, please check out my Patreon. The link is in the description here below. Only if you're able to, of course. Now, let's get back to our guest. I really want us to meet. That would be awesome. Whenever you come to Southern California. But I definitely want to go to Spain. That's on my bucket list. It sounds like such an amazing city. Do you speak Spanish as well? I do. But it's a different kind of Spanish. Uh, you have a way more beautiful kind of Spanish. Like the South American Spanish is way more beautiful. Oh, that's how I feel about the Spain Spanish. And no, the Spain Spanish always have a lisp. I know, and that's so <laughs> cool to me. <laughs> no. It's so crazy how we think different is complete opposite. But no, like you, when you hear... Um, you know, that like you just envision that man with the rose in his like mouth <laughs> talking to you. 
<laughs> and he's about to like ask you to run away with him or something and he says it with a list <laughs> <laughs> with this list like they list they list on words that doesn't even have s's in them i'm like this is too much <laughs> you know <laughs> oh my god no that's why i think like so- south american spanish is way it's i think it sounds more clear as well and and spanish people they speak so fast like it's it's mm-hmm. another kind of level fast you know i have to i have to put subtitles every time i watch a spanish show because they do talk really fast i'm like wait what did they say and certain things are said said differently like like i love yous and i miss yous are said completely different i'm like wait what did he say to her oh that just means i miss you yeah ah, there's interesting. like there's like a te extraño is is how I'm familiar with saying like I miss you. And mm-hmm. then in Spain or in the shows, they always say I'm missing, I'm missing without you. But I don't know the, the correct translation. But there's like another another word. Yes, because in French, I think it's the same in French and Spanish. Okay, I have no idea, but I can I can imagine it is that way, as they're all from like Latin, the Latin kind like the Latin language sorry so in french you say to me monk you are missed to me mm-hmm. basically yeah maybe that's how they say yes they say you are missed to me but in spanish yeah they, i can't say it right now <laughs> <laughs> but yes that's how they say it wait you speak so how many languages do you speak only three enfin, not only but only i speak three, three. i speak three <laughs> See, I took French for two years in high school and I did not, like, I, I can't. Yeah, you need to, like, I learned French for 13 years in school and then, like, one year without it after because I was working, uh, I was working in Sweden to get some money for, for uh, I was going to move to Paris. Uh, so, because I decided, like, I if I, if I don't move to French-speaking country, I will... Rem- I will forget all the 13 years of French that I've done, you know? I'm like, it's not worth it. I need to do this. And um, so I moved to, to Paris and that's where I got everything, actually. Everything that I've done in school, yes, it was surely a good ground and base, but it was, I mean, you go to a country and you work there and you talk to people that will correct you they will make sure that you you know how to talk like them uh what do you call it so in school i was obviously taught you know the the correct way of saying things but we both know that that's not how you how you talk on an everyday basis do you see what Mm -hmm. i mean like this everyday kind of talk this more casual language that's what you learn when you when you finally like move to a country um so that's where I learned, like fully learned French, uh, I would say. So the French that, that we were being taught wasn't the way they were speaking it at all. <laughs> now, when I've been in Spain for a year, like I understand, I do understand a lot of Spanish. I I have to say that, but that is only thanks to French. Uh, only thanks to French, because as they both, France, French, Spanish and Italian, at least, maybe there's other languages as well, I don't know, are all have like Latin roots. So there's so many words that are are the same or are similar. So and also like the the language is built more or less in the same way, which makes it Mm -hmm. easier to to learn and understand. Um, But yeah, don't you feel that with with French then that like you can understand some parts as you speak Spanish? There was a lot of there was a lot of the same that I was like, oh, okay, this makes sense. But I think the only the only thing I retained from French class is Bonjour, moi je m'appelle Jacqueline. Oh, très bien. <laughs> Bravo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but two years is is very two years for for what I just said right now. <laughs> yeah, that's good. At least you got hopefully good grades. I forgot. Hi, my name is Jackie. <laughs> <laughs> Always something. I used to be able to say how old I was, but I was 16 and I was 16 for a really long time. <laughs> <laughs> Still 16. Still 16 in heart. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, because in French, I don't know if you say that in Spanish, because in French you say, I have 30 years, for example. Do you say the same in Spanish? 
like I have instead of I am mm-hmm. 30. Yes, uh, I have. So you say tengo. I have. Tengo, I have. Tengo tre- 27. Tre- tre- 30. 30. No, 30. 30. 30 años. <laughs> <laughs> tenga, no, tengo or tenga? No, tengo. Tengo. Tengo 30 años. Muy bien. Oh, gracias, chica. <laughs> Yeah, it's fun you to... Look, uh, you do, You look so young, girl. Oh, thanks. Look at but, that glowy skin. Yeah. I'm like, oh. looking at your... <laughs> <laughs> it's because it's dark. That's why you think that. <laughs> and no, all your pictures. You, you post beautiful content. I love it. Oh, thanks, babe. Thanks, babe. I think it's so fun that Instagram can give you such a platform for like living out your creative creative like part of yourself you know we're so fortunate if you think about it like imagine back in the days yes you had blogs 10 years ago for sure even 15 years ago but it's not the same as instagram instagram is this direct connection it's what you're seeing yes and you can not only you know do your feed you can also post some stories and you can dm people and you can do these things where you you know tag someone and someone does this you i mean it's so like you put everyone together, like there's strings between us all, which is so nice, you know? I love it. And then you find that like, oh, that person knows that person now and that person knows that one now. And oh, look, now we're like a little group of people that know each other. And I like, know. Oh, I love that part. And it, 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 I'm still going to remember the day that I DM'd you and I was like, hey, like how how are you so comfortable about like posting about cannabis? Do you remember that? That yes. was like really recent. Because yes. I was still so scared. And then after that talk with you, I was like, you know what? <laughs> started posting more yes but all good I, I i think it's 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 nice that like instagram is even getting a little lenient with the content of cannabis too because not a lot of things get deleted like it used to because i remember it was like instant delete maybe even just like a year ago when i first joined the industry and my first shop had their instagram we couldn't post anything that like showed a nug or showed any part of the plant without it getting deleted and really you know, and everything that I've posted so far nothing has been like I still I still haven't had anything um uh, like taken I was shadow banned for like a week but I think that was because actually what it was it was because I had been somewhere for like a weekend like for a friend's like birthday weekend and I hadn't like catched uh, caught up on my Instagram uh not my feed but yeah my feed no where I see everyone else what do you call that the activity. Yeah. Right? Where I see like your where you posts. You see like the comments. The lo- oh, oh no. okay. The feed. You call it the, the feed. feed. Oh, okay. Okay. Right? So, is it the feed? Isn't my, no, my wall is my wall and then my feed is everyone else, right? Where I see your photo, I see people, other people's photos. Last thing, our feed. Yes, our feed. Good. Yeah, but shit. It's is the, the feed. Because I always say that I'm like, oh, bless, like I'll, I'll comment on somebody, blessing our feed. Because she's uh, like, you know, you're swiping and you're seeing the feed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then what is, what is, is it just my Instagram after that? Your wall. Is it the wall? I think so. Is that what it's called? Isn't that like Facebook talk? I don't know. Do you say- I think that's... <laughs> Maybe that's Facebook. Maybe you call <laughs> your Facebook page your wall. Yes, yes. Isn't it like that? My wall. Instagram, please send us the answer. <laughs> please. This is so confusing. And fuck what was I going to say? Oh, yes. Okay, so I was going to say how I... How I got shadow banned. <laughs> there, I got it. <laughs> so, um, wait, can you can you explain what shadow banned is? So basically, it's like people cannot see me. So I just noticed that like no one really saw my photos. I didn't have the same engagement as normal and so on. And I was googling like, okay, so oh yes, and I couldn't I couldn't like or comment on other people's posts. Oh, okay, that's happened to me before. Oh, yeah? I, yeah. That's, that's what I thought was interesting. Like, sometimes I'm, like, getting so into communicating with people or, like, having conversations, and all of a sudden it's like, nope, you can't no more. And I'm like, wait, what? You got me so excited, Instagram, and now you're going to tell me no? <laughs> exactly. And that was so so weird because it lasted for so many days for me. Um, mm-hmm. And because, like you said, like, I had gone through, like, three days of of stuff that I missed. So I was like commenting and liking and like really engaging because I missed, yeah, stuff. I mean, 
you know, by yourself. I mean, it's really hard to keep up on Instagram. I really love to see the people I'm following, but it's also so easy to miss because it's really hard to... And it doesn't show you everything either. It only shows you like like a small group. Like there's stuff that I haven't, there's pages that I haven't or profiles or whatever you call them that I haven't seen in ages. And sometimes I have to go through like, wait, who, who am I like still? And then you go down your list and you click on these pages and they've posted tons of photos. They are married with kids now. And you're just like, I wait know. a minute, what happened here? I've never seen any of this. They were what friends. The <laughs> you're married, girl. <laughs> That is so true. And then like, there's that little section where it's like least interacted with. And I'm like, well, how is that my fault? You're not showing me their stuff. I know. I know. It doesn't make sense. So many, so many times I go in on Instagram and I'm like, how, how did this photo come up? Like for the first, like this person, like I never interact with this person at all. And it's something four days ago. Like, how does that even come up on like on top of my on the feed you know it's so weird yeah I don't I don't understand I feel like it needs to just go back to like going in order if you want to post something in the morning then you're going to be in the morning section afternoon night exactly yeah yeah yeah. because then you can just like okay let's see how like I wasn't on Instagram for two days so scroll two days and then you know Mm. go go in that order yeah that would make it so much easier Oh, that would have made it yeah definitely (laughs) thank you so much for this talk it was amazing it was really nice meeting you. Same. Look at how happy I was talking to you that I didn't even pay attention to my coffee. <laughs> Full glass. Then. Full cup. Yes. <laughs> oh, nice. Right, well, babe, well, you have a good night. Enjoy your dinner. Thank you, babe. Send and have a good day. Mm, lots of love, babe. Yeah, bye. Ciao. Thank you so much for listening. Please subscribe to my social channels and rate this podcast. And if you would like to support me a little bit extra, it would really mean the world to me. So check out my Patreon profile that I linked in the episode description. It's all thanks to your support that I can continue talking, writing, recording and making more cannabis content for you and our amazing community. Have an awesome day and lots of love.